How do you feel about Tesla's price now? And are you still adding to your position? Uh, yes. Well, as you know, we report our trades uh, every day and you will see that uh, we have been adding to Tesla. Uh, we, our confidence in Tesla has grown as we've done research on what ride sharing potentially could add. It could limit the risk significantly. It's a much more profitable business than electric vehicles. And we do think even though uh, I think there's some debate at uh, Tesla whether or not they should launch a human-driven ride-hailing network. It would be a very good bridge, we think, to their autonomous strategy, and we think they will decide to do that. Uh, I don't think anyone has uh, in their models uh, anything for ride-sharing. And then uh, as time goes on and we learn about their artificial intelligence expertise, the 30 billion miles they've collected of real world driving data. No one comes close, not even, I think Google might be at 30 million compared to 30 billion. And we know that in the AI world and autonomous is AI, that uh, that the, the company with the, the most data and the best quality data will win. Uh, so uh, we're pretty excited about autonomous and our, the probability of success in autonomous, uh, we believe is going up. Uh, and therefore our price target will probably follow at some point. Okay, and uh, Bitcoin is on everybody's mind right now. Your next gen internet fund has a very large position in the grayscale Bitcoin trust uh, so uh, uh, your thoughts on this, your thoughts on Bitcoin, a Bitcoin ETF for 2021, is it coming? And do you have any concerns that the Grayscale closed end fund still trading at a pretty significant uh, premium? Well, the premiums come down quite a bit. I think uh, now that we know uh, that the next SEC commissioner is going to be David Gensler, uh, I've, who uh, spent the last few years at MIT, uh, teaching a class about blockchain technology, Bitcoin. I think he understands the technology uh, and he understands the currency itself. Uh, so I think the probability of an ETF uh, has gone up. Uh, we also know that the director of research uh, for crypto in the crypto space at the SEC has been promoted and will be reporting directly uh, to Gensler. Uh, so again, uh, I think we have uh, individuals now uh, involved who really understand the space. And uh, I think the likelihood has gone up. What has surprised us, we expected institutional interest to pick up this year, and it certainly has. But the way in which it's picked up has surprised us. Uh, I don't think we ever thought there would be broad-based uh, substitution of Bitcoin for cash on corporate balance sheets. Uh, so we find that very interesting. Uh, if all corporations in the United States were to put, uh, I think it's yes, 10% of their cash into Bitcoin, that alone would add uh, $200,000 to the Bitcoin price. Uh, now, we obviously do not believe this is going to happen uh, very quickly. Uh, we are, we're talking about maybe the equivalent of $900 billion market cap equivalent for, for Bitcoin. That's, that's less than half the price of uh, you know the apples and Amazons of the world, so you know this has to mature a little bit before broad-based adoption can take place. But we're very reassured uh, that companies like Square and Tesla have chosen to allocate. They're on the right side of change when it comes to innovation, and uh, therefore we think it's wise that they. Uh, uh, diversify some of their cash. And I think the biggest surprise to many uh, Tesla doubters is that it is now in a position where it has that much cash uh, that it is diversified. Now, you've been directionally right on a number of other big stock bets, including Teladoc. This is your largest holding in the Genomics Revolution Fund you run. It's also a big holding uh, in the Innovation Fund. It's up about 40 percent this year. It's got a $40 billion market cap right now. This is telemedicine. Is telemedicine really going to continue to shine once COVID recedes? Well, we had a great opportunity to uh, buy into Teladoc when the stay-at-home stocks were starting to uh, flatten out as the vaccine 
was on the horizon, Teladoc was one of those stocks. And it then was hurt by an acquisition it made, Livongo. Uh, this is a beautiful acquisition for, uh, for Teladoc. Uh, the most important uh, variable, again, I'm going to come back to AI over and over again, because we think that is going to represent $30 trillion in market cap during the next uh, 10 years. And uh, we are just beginning. So with Livongo, uh, Teladoc now has one of the best artificial intelligence teams and some of the best data. That's the other thing we'll come back to most data, best quality data. And uh, we think the combination of Teladoc and Livongo is, is going to be a powerhouse. One services more the acute setting in medicine, and uh, that would be Teladoc itself primarily. And Livongo is more involved on the chronic side. Uh, so chronic conditions, kidney conditions, uh, mental health and so forth. So uh, we believe that with this data, uh, these two two companies, now that they're together, now that they put their AI teams together, uh, are going to be able to um, make uh, healthcare help make the healthcare ecosystem uh, better, cheaper, faster, more productive, more creative. What we say about all kinds of innovation, they're in a beautiful position to do this. Kathy, it's it's not just Teladoc out of your signature innovation fund that has enjoyed uh, spectacular gains over the last year. I'm, I'm looking at the list of your, your top holdings, whether it's Spotify or Shopify or Zoom Video, for example. Uh, the gains have just been tremendous. I'm wondering what happens when we get on with the rest of our lives after COVID, and how do you think about taking profits, even though I know your, your typical sort of outlook is a five-year time horizon, it doesn't mean you can't take profits every now and then and redeploy capital elsewhere to some of the laggards, perhaps. How do you think about that? Sure. Well, what, the last year has been instructive. During the coronavirus crisis, we consolidated to our, our highest conviction names, especially those that were, uh, they were, tormented by, I would say, algorithms who were looking for small cash cushions and cash burn. Uh, and so we had great opportunities to buy stocks at a fraction of a cost uh, of the cost uh, uh, from just a month earlier. Certainly Invite uh, and Zillow were two of those stocks. Uh, and um, and then they've had magnificent runs. Many, Square would be in this category as well. Many are up five to 10 times. Uh, Tesla is also in that category. There was a lot of fear about its condition. Uh, and then what you saw was uh, the stay-at-home stocks uh, start to flatten out. So uh, toward the end of last year. So some of the stocks in, into which we had concentrated our portfolios they were up, as I mentioned, five to tenfold. We started moving back into these stay-at-home stocks because it seems to us that many analysts and portfolio managers believe that after uh, the vaccines uh, make it through our population and, and the rest of the world, that these stocks are, will be done. Uh, we actually think that uh, that innovation makes the world a better place generally in the ways I described earlier and that the uh, the coronavirus has accelerated the shift towards these new ways of doing things, these new ways of spending time. Uh, so we, we, we were happy to get the reprieve in some of these so-called stay-at-home stocks in the last, I'm going to say six months. It really started in July, August, uh, giving us time to move out of some of the names that had taken off and into those uh, that that uh, were marking time. So that's what we do. We, we are considered a liquidity provider, mm -hmm. which means when people are uh, selling, we will be buying. And when people are buying, and these are investors in re retail and, and institutional, we are uh, uh, likely to be taking profits, as you say. Taking profits is never a bad idea.